Hey everybody, welcome back to another business analysis video. In today's video, I'll be talking to you about how to model a business use case diagram. So a use case diagram is a visual representation of an actor's interaction with a system. So it provides a diagrammatic representation of actors who will engage with the system and the features the actors need to access within that system. It helps to represent the stakeholders' views of the solution. And it's a tool that can be used um, by business analysts during meetings, during workshops, during various discussions with stakeholders. It generally also shows a set of features that the stakeholders require from a solution. So before you create a use case diagram, it's best to create a context diagram, which is a higher level representation of the interaction between the actors and the system without necessarily um, highlighting what the actors are doing within that system. So the context diagram is what we will then develop into the use case diagram. And the context diagram looks like this. It has the system representation within a circle and it also highlights or shows the actors, various actors that will be using the system. And it can also sometimes show other systems as actors who also interact with the main system. Now, for the purpose of this video, a system can be a website, a software component, an application or a business process and many other things. So you represent a system boundary with a rectangle on your use case diagram. So this is what a use case diagram looks like. It has various elements within it. The first element is the rectangle shape, which represents a system boundary, okay? And you also place the name of the system at the top of the rectangle. Anything represented within the rectangle is what happens within the system and anything represented outside that rectangle, outside that boundary, is what happens outside the system. And this is where we will present our actors and other systems that interact. Now, I've used the Business Analyst School membership website as an example to show you the use case diagram. The second element is the actor. The actor is generally represented by a stick figure. I've used Visio to map this um, a diagram and it's presented me with this person as an actor. So the actor could be a person, an organization or another system like I mentioned. Um, within this diagram, the actors include the customers, the business analyst school members, the IT area, and the provider of the services within the membership space. So there are two types of actors, and these are the primary actors and the secondary actors. So the primary actors are the actors who initiate the use of the system, while the secondary actors are reactionary to the use of the system from or by the primary actor. So generally on your use case diagram, you would present your primary actors on the left side and your secondary actors on the right side. The third element is the use case itself, which is depicted with an oval shape and it represents the action that occur within the systems, those tasks and those things that the primary and secondary actors will um, initiate or react to within the system. So two tips I'd like to share with you while mapping your use case diagram is that the use case should start with a verb and it's reinforced by an action. And you should also represent your use cases in a logical order, that is in the order that they are performed by the actors. So the fourth element within the use case diagram is the relationships. These show the interaction between the actors and the use cases, okay? And the relationships are represented by a solid line between the actor and the use case. And this line is called an association. Now there are four types of relationships that is showing that link between the actor and the use case. Um, 
These four types include the association, the include, the extend and the generalization. For today's video, I'll be showing you the most common one, which is the association, which generally just shows the initial and the main link between the actor and that initial task that they perform within the system. So the association is a solid line between the actor and the use case. Okay, so let's go back to this example of my use case diagram with the business analyst school. You can see the actors who are the customers, the members, the provider of these services within the system and the admin. The customer generally are able to browse the content within the business analyst school space and they are also able to register for the membership. Now the members also are able to browse content, they're able to log in, they're able to register for the membership and they're able to watch the content within the membership space. Now the provider, which is me, um, is able to log in and upload content. Various content including resources, templates, interview preparation, workbooks and videos, business analysis courses. Uh, now the admin, which can also be the IT person, is able to manage accounts when there are issues um, from customers or members, that person is able to respond. So this use case diagram has represented highest level what the use cases are, who the actors are and what the system is that um, represents that relationship between the actors and the system. Now I did mention that there are other relationships which include the extent and the generalization. This is covered in a masterclass within the Business Analyst School membership space. Link in description box if you'd like to join the membership. So that's the end of today's video. I hope you've enjoyed the content and now have a better understanding of the use case diagram and how to use this as a business analyst. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe and share this content. You never know who it might help. Till I see you in my next one. Peace.